Connor Basilak's streak of 16 consecutive starts for a Missouri quarterback is reportedly finished. What should the Tigers' plan be at the position the rest of the season? Plus, a big-time former verbal commit for the Tigers is entering the transfer portal from Texas A&M and the Twitterati weigh in on my S- best Missouri running back in the SEC era debate. All this and more right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. And thank you for making Locked on Mizzou your first listen each and every weekday. Even when I don't get to the to an episode like I did yesterday. My apologies for that, by the way. But you know what? I was waiting for an important piece of quarterback information that never happened. But fortunately, we got a little more clarity this morning. But first, I do want to tell you that this episode of Locked on Mizzou is brought to you by McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. McDonald's has always been more than just a place to get tasty, affordable food. It's an unofficial community center. A big thank you to our friends at McDonald's for always being there. I'm loving it. And apparently we did get some definitive information, at least about Connor Basilak's status this morning. Pete Thamel at Yahoo Sports reports that Basilak will be out in this game that expect both Brady Cook and Tyler Macon to play for Missouri. And I have to say, I can't be surprised that Connor is out tomorrow, but the idea that Brady Cook and Tyler Macon should be expected to play tomorrow, well, whether that's accurate or not, we'll have to find out. But I will say this, if I were Eli Drinkwitz, if I were in charge of the Missouri program, that wouldn't be my plan. My plan would be pretty clear for these last four ball games because, indeed, Missouri has, uh, we're playing Georgia tomorrow. Then two home games, South Carolina, Florida, finally at Arkansas to finish the year. So four games are left, and it's important to keep in mind that Tyler Macon has played, the true freshman has played in two games so far. So that means he still has two games left that he can appear in without burning his red shirt. So to me, even though I definitely want to see Tyler Macon at some point this season, if possible, the last thing you want to do is burn his red shirt in games that don't really matter. So to me, the next two weeks, not only against Georgia, but against South Carolina the following week in Columbia, I'm telling Brady Cook he's the starter for the next two weeks, no matter what. I'm telling him that. I'm telling the team that. Because again, I don't want to play Macon in those in the next two ball games unless absolutely necessary. Number one, obviously, there's the red shirt factor that I just explained. But number two, again, the kid is a true freshman that, because of COVID last season, didn't get to play his senior season of high school football. So let's just give him as much time, as much reps as possible to get ready to actually play in a real football game. So to me, Brady Cook, a, a guy who I have, I have a lot of of hope. Let's put it that way. I think both Brady Cook and Tyler Macon, you go back and look at their play in high school, you look at Brady's play and and very limited action during his time at Missouri, and you see signs for hope. Both guys are have ability to scramble, move around in the pocket, both have good enough arms and and good enough ability to throw on the move. There's actually some similarities between the two. Of course, Brady, the much larger man. That's for darn sure. That's probably the thing that stands out about them in terms of physically is Tyler may be only 5'10", 5'11", whereas Brady Cook is maybe your more traditional taller quarterback. 
But regardless, I'm not ready to make any wild declarations about either guy before we see them play against real competition. Because even though we've seen Brady Cook, again, at Missouri, have some impressive moments, it's come in garbage time situations and against limited opponents, let's be honest. Same thing with Tyler Macon. So you throw him out there against Georgia, well, guess what? You're not expecting anything good. You're not expecting great results. You're not expecting Brady Cook to go out and throw for 300 yards. And in fact, you should just throw out all of the traditional statistics in this game and just actually let your eyeballs do the judgment. Is he making good decisions? Is he buying himself time? And is he keeping his eyes down the field as he's buying this time? That's just the little things like that is how you really want to judge Brady Cook and Tyler Make in these last four games. And again, regardless of Basilak's status, I'm telling Cook he's got the car keys the next two weeks. Give him this game against Georgia, against a an opponent that he's going to be running for his life in some at this game. So if Brady Cook hasn't really been under a lot of pressure during his career as a quarterback, well, guess what? We're going to see what that looks like tomorrow. And then to be fair to him, let's give him a game where he can actually do some stuff against South Carolina. A home game against, uh, you know, we'll have the contrast, in other words. We'll have a road game against one of the best defenses of the last 10 or so years in college football. And then you'll have a more realistic opponent, an opponent that Missouri should expect to score some points on in South Carolina. To me, you give yourself those two full games of analysis for Brady Cook, and I think you should have a much better idea of what kind of player you have. And assuming he stays healthy for these next two games, well, then you leave Tyler Macon on the bench. He's your backup quarterback, obviously, assuming Basilak isn't ready to play against South Carolina either. But hopefully you don't have to play him. You only play him in an injury situation. But then the last two weeks against Florida and Arkansas, yeah, I would absolutely give Macon some series at the very least. So to me, that should be the plan for quarterback the rest of this season, give Brady Cook the ball the next two weeks, and then reevaluate from there based on how he plays and then also Bays lacks health. Because I don't want anybody to get the, the impression that I'm completely giving up on Connor. I want to see him get healthy and hopefully maybe get some of his confidence back because next season he should be every bit as part a bit as part of the quarterback competition as anybody. No doubt about that. He's certainly earned that at the very least. And coming up, some pretty big news out of College Station, Texas, involving a former Missouri linebacker, I should say a former high school player from Missouri, a linebacker who was committed to the Tigers at one point, eventually then went to Texas A&M, obviously. Could he be heading toward the Tigers in the future? Well, let's talk about that. But first, I want to tell you, this episode of Locked on Mizzou is brought to you by McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. And like I said before, McDonald's is more than just a place to get your fabulous hash browns and bacon, egg, and cheese biscuits, although, you know what, that's a great reason to go to McDonald's. But you can also go there to reconnect not only refuel, but reconnect with friends and family, whether it's classmates for a study group, maybe you're meeting the old ball club for a end of the season sort of get together, or heck, maybe the next Locked on Mizzou watch party. You never know. But regardless, you got to go to McDonald's whenever you need whenever you need to just refuel, reconnect, or maybe just get some reliable Wi-Fi. How about that? Well, McDonald's has you covered with all that. So head to McDonald's now, get your favorite meal, and when you do, sing your own rendition of the McDonald's jingle. You know what I'm saying? Ba-da-ba-ba. Ba-bow! Yeah, that's my rendition. But seriously, thanks again to McDonald's. I'm loving it. So other than Connor Basilak, a pretty pedestrian injury report in, in terms of news, boy, it seems like I've talked about receiver Mookie Cooper a lot on this show, considering how much 
actual time he spent on the football field this season, but it is notable that he did not pop up on the injury report at all, as questionable, as probable as anything. So I would imagine we'll see Cooper at least in limited action in Athens tomorrow. Now, some of you who follow recruiting closely probably remember the name Antonio Doyle. And that's probably because Doyle was a former verbal Missouri commitment. And, well, he's back on the market. He's in the transfer portal. And if you look at a position of need on the Missouri roster, well, linebacker is about as much of a need as you're going to get. Now, if you're saying, hey, every position on the Missouri front seven is a position of need based on how they've played so far this year. Well, I can't argue with that, but if you actually look at the recruiting classes, the true freshmen on the roster, well, certainly more depth, at least in terms of bodies at the defensive end position than say linebacker. But it sounds like there's a decent chance, you know, just on the scuttlebutt that I've been hearing from Gabe DeArmond at Power Mizzou and elsewhere that Antonio Doyle, a decent shot that he ends up at Missouri, where again, he originally was a verbal commitment for the Tigers. So one to watch for there for sure. It sounds like at Texas A&M, Doyle was playing mostly defensive end. So maybe that's another reason why he's in the portal. Maybe he'd like to get back to his old linebacker spot. But regardless, Antonio Doyle, a guy to keep keep an eye on, if he winds up at Missouri, wouldn't exactly be a shocker at this point. By the way, in terms of project run play in the Missouri uniform reveal this week, well, you might have caught on over at Twitter at Locked on Mizzou that I was extremely confused by Missouri's uniform reveal this week. And well, a few hours later, I realized, oh, that was a reference to the Squid Games, a Netflix show that I have not watched one second of. So my apologies to all of you out there in social media for appearing to be a gigantic, gigantic boomer in that moment. I hate to say it, I'm not that interested in the Squid Games, but the video itself, very bizarre. Glad I finally got some context there. The highlight certainly was Truman the Tiger apparently snuffing out one of the uniform models and doing his signature Tiger twirl taunt. Good stuff. Only The only thing better than a Truman the Tiger twirling his tail is when he does the air guitar with it. You know what I'm saying? You get the Truman air guitar. Now that to me is the best mascot move of all time. And you know what? I and other people on the Mizzou beat like Dave Matter have been asking and analyzing who is the best Missouri running back, at least in the SEC era. Let's keep it fairly recent. And Missouri's had a lot of good running backs during this era. Well, I weighed in on this topic earlier this week, but I thought I'd take it to the public. So over at Locked on Mizzou, put out a poll asking who is indeed the best SEC running back for Missouri during that era. I've got the results for you and some analysis, but first I want to tell you about our friends at BetOnline. Dot AG, where Missouri is now a 39 point underdog. We might even get to 42 by the end of this, by the end of Saturday. Who the heck knows? I have no idea. It seems like that line just keeps creeping up. Nobody wants to bet on Missouri, especially with the quarterback, the starting quarterback ruled out. If you're a public better, that makes sense why you would definitely not want to touch Missouri. So I get it. But Regardless of what your opinions are, you need to go to betonline.ag. And regardless if it is football or it's basketball, perhaps you're into UFC, hockey, or maybe some Vegas casino games, regardless, they've got you covered over at betonline.ag. And you know what? I've got a great 50% welcome bonus for you today on your first deposit. Just enter the promo code LOCKED ON. And again, you'll receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use the promo code LOCKED ON when you go to Bet Online, where the game starts. By the way, quick congratulations out 
to the Kansas City Chiefs, Nick Bolton, who is named the NFL's Defensive Rookie of the Month. So Nick Bolton really, really shining so far on a extremely, extremely bad Kansas City Chiefs defense so far. So good for Nick. I might have to pick up a red Nick Bolton Chiefs jersey at some point. I got to be honest. But you know what? I, I do want to talk just a little bit more about, of course, our good friend Tyler Beatty and the rest of the great running backs of this SEC era of Missouri football. Again, over at Locked on Mizzou on Twitter, I just put out the poll. I, I gave the options of Tyler Beatty, Henry Josie, Marcus Murphy, and Larry Roundtree. And you know what? I did have one person on Twitter who took me to task for leaving Demarie Crockett out of that mix. So I apologize if you wanted to say that Demarie Crockett was the best, but I definitely had him fifth. I just didn't think anybody would actually vote for Crockett first. So I, I chose to leave him off. If you think that that was a mistake, well, feel free to continue to take me to task. But based on this poll, and we did get 64 votes on this, so not exactly a scientific sample size, but big enough for this endeavor, in my opinion. Well, in fact, Henry Josie, your pretty overwhelming winner, getting the majority of the votes. Josie got 55% of the votes to Tyler Beatty's 23%, Larry Roundtree a close third at 20%, Marcus Murphy with only 2% of the vote, despite being obviously the best returner, kick returner of that group, really the only kick returner of that group for all intents and purposes. So I tell you this, though, I, I, I'm not surprised that it basically came down to Josie and Beatty. I'm a little bit surprised that Josie won that convincingly. I think that maybe a lot of that, listen, don't get me wrong. I love Henry Josie, one of my favorite players of all time, but so is Tyler Beatty. So allow me to at least make the case for Tyler Beatty here. For as great as Henry Josie was, and he was a great, great player, I think people are skewed by the fact that Josie's last season was that great 2013 Missouri campaign where obviously Missouri was essentially a final four team that year close to close to winning the SEC had a lead in the fourth quarter so a lot of great memories not only of Josie but that season in particular unfortunately Tyler Beatty does not have that the 2021 season has not been a memorable one and the 2019 season where Beatty had his breakout season, well, that was one of the worst offenses in recent Missouri history, possibly the history of the program. So I think that skews a lot of people's perception of both players. Well, you know what? Let's go back to that 2013 campaign for Henry Josie. And if you conclude his rushing yards and his receiving yards, so his yards per scrimmage. Well, through 14 games, 14 total games, Henry Josie had 1,231 yards and 17 touchdowns. Well, so far in just eight games this season, in fact, actually Tyler Beatty has more scrimmage yards than Henry Josie did in his final season at Missouri. In fact, by nearly 80 yards, Beatty has him in fewer games. Now, if you look at touches, well, actually, Beatty has a few more touches than Josie. So you're talking about a guy who, in Beatty, they have similar touches through the same amount of games. So what I'm saying is you can actually compare them pretty favorably. Well, their average per touch, Beatty 6.6, .6, Josie 6.7. So essentially the same amount here. Touchdowns, you got Beatty at 15, Josie 17. Now, again, those are really, really similar numbers. So again, my argument for Beatty is not only did Beatty obviously play in front of a lesser offensive line, just a lesser team in general. Obviously, the 13 squad, a much better passing game as well with Doriel Green Beckham. Marcus, Marcus Lucas, Bud Sasser, among others. Just some really good receivers. James Franklin at quarterback. Certainly, I think we'd all take James over Connor Basilak at this point. So to me, you factor that in. And also, you just have to factor in, to me, 
the fact that Beatty is the better pass receiver. He is the more dangerous weapon out of the backfield as a receiver. To me, you have to take all that into account, and that's my argument for Beatty. Now, if you're still sticking with Josie, you still love his comeback story, just the kind of guy that he is, I'm not going to argue with any of that. The great thing is it seems like Josie, I follow him on social media, just seems like a great dude who's enjoying his post-football life. Well, fortunately, Tyler Beatty seems like a really good guy too. So whoever you want out of that mix, I'm not going to argue with you. Two really similarly sized guys, though, both about 5'9", 190 pounds, something like that. So regardless, two great Missouri running backs that Missouri fans should be really proud of both on and off the field. So you know what? Since I missed yesterday's program, waiting around for that injury report, I owe you guys one more show this week. So you know what? Post game following the Georgia ball game, I'll have another episode of Locked on Mizzou for you. So as soon as I can, following the final whistle, I'll have you a Georgia-Missouri recap. So until then, I am John Miller, and this has been Locked on Mizzou.